So for the next uh, hour and a half or so, we'll be going over post-tension basics and principles. Effectively, this is the kind of um, summary version of uh, a good chunk of a basic um, PT Concrete 101 class that hopefully uh, you took in college or hopefully they're offering now in college. When I was in school, um, way back in the day, PT was not even offered as a you know, an hour long discussion. Um, hopefully that's changing a little bit, but if you didn't take that class, hopefully this can fill in some of the blanks. Uh, first of all, before we get started, most of the uh, topics I'm going to discuss, well, all the topics I'm going to discuss, and a lot of the uh, photographs and figures are in uh, my book, Postage and Concrete Principles and Practice, which you can purchase a hard copy or a PDF copy ebook. Uh, through SK Ghosh and Associates. So if this is interesting and you want to expand your knowledge, uh, please purchase the book. Uh, the first, I believe, 10 chapters is the um, PT 101 course that is offered at several universities um, around the California area. And then the other half of the book, the last nine or 10 chapters, are practical applications. So if you've seen other of my webinars about, let's say, two-way slab design or podium slab design, a lot of those informations are uh, pictures and information are in the lighter chapter. So it pretty much covers everything I do in the office from the very, very basic stuff, obviously, into the much more advanced uh, specific job uh, detailing and engineering, and also the construction aspects that we try to avoid to make PT concrete as good as it can be. So having started with that, um, the interesting thing about PT, especially with dealing with other engineers, um, you know, in, uh, like in most businesses, there's a competition between materials. Some people love BT, like myself, so obviously I'm drinking the PT Kool-Aid. And there's a lot of engineers who basically hate PT, primarily because they can't do it, and they lose jobs to it because it, pretty much in every sense of the way, a PT job is a thinner deck, has less reinforcing, and it's usually faster to build. So it's hard to argue logistically or dollars-wise that PT is a bad idea. But if you can't do it and you can't engineer it, obviously you're going to badmouth it. And there's a lot of PT myths that I've heard for the last 20 years that still are around and are just, you know, myths and incorrect. One of the things is that PT sellers will tell you or PT um, salesmen are trying to promote, and that this is a totally incorrect. Uh, PT concrete is crack free. That's totally false. Anyone tells you that, discount them immediately. Uh, concrete is concrete, whether it's rebar or post-tensioned. Uh, concrete will crack. It haven't, if it hasn't cracked, it will crack soon. It's like wood splintering and steel rusting. It's just the nature of the beast. The fact that you're taking fours at 12 or fives at 12 each way top and bottom and pulling them out and putting some strands in does not change concrete as the material itself. Um, now, if you do it correctly, it's built correctly, you detail it correctly, you can have a minimization of cracks, which is obviously a wonderful thing, but post-tensioning as itself does not promote or even guarantee craft free concrete. That's a complete fallacy. The other thing I've heard a lot of people say, especially contractors, is that PT concrete is waterproof. And again, this is a huge fallacy. Uh, if anyone tells you this, disbelieve them quickly. Concrete, as I said previously, is concrete. You hydrate the water out, it cures. It is definitely not a waterproof material. And by putting in 100 PSI, 200 PSI, 700 PSI, and just squeezing the heck out of it, does not make all of a sudden a material that hydrated water out all of a sudden waterproof. Now, in a perfect ideal world, if you had no cracks and you squeezed it harder, yes, there probably is some slight improvement. But like I said, everything cracks, PT concrete cracks. And when you have a crack, I don't care how much pre-compression or rebar you have in a deck, that's definitely not waterproof. Now, like I said, it could possibly help. But if you want waterproofing, do not rely on PT systems. Use an admixture, use a topping slab with a, you know, a, a visqueen layer or something like that to give you waterproofing, but do not rely upon the strands and pre-compression. Uh, another per people have said, this obviously comes from more engineers, is that balance loads reduce the load on the columns and the foundations. Now, the balance load, I will discuss in a little bit, basically it's the upward, hopefully the upward force that goes against gravity to make our PT slabs and beams thinner and have less rebar than the um, rebar-only equivalents. The problem is that because you stress strands in concrete, it does in no way change the actual weight of a building. Now, numerically, you can and kind of show that somehow the net load on the columns is different, but that's a numerical methods of how we design it. But an eight inch slab, nine inch slab, a 12 story building, 
in concrete weighs as much as it does with PT or with rebar. So never, obviously never consider the columns or foundations having less load or less punching shear simply because PT is being used. It's a numerical misstep that we'll go through and hopefully no one on this one makes that mistake.